So now, so moving on, I guess part two is the looking at the internship year and, and what that kind of entailed. So you completed your internship year at Alfred Health in 2021 last year. Uh, and of course, the, the UniMelb's MD program, they utilized the last six months, I believe, to, they call it like the pre-internship or preparation for internship, where yep. you're effectively in clinical placement or on wards, pretty much your entire contact time, right? Yeah, that's right. Yep. And so I guess like, how did it feel or how was it? What was the experience like being on the wards as an intern and you're no, you've no longer got the title or potentially like the security of being a medical student and you've obviously got a lot more responsibility. It's still a training program in a sense as well, but how did it feel to, I guess, be managing patients and working on the wards without the title of student and instead now being a fully fledged doctor? Yeah, it's, I mean, this sort of pre-internship model is a very common one around Australia. And so it sort of, it sort of ends up meaning that as a final year medical student, you do a lot of the role of the intern, right? You sort of almost play the role as an extra intern, particularly as you sort of develop your skills and towards the very end of the year, you essentially are the extra intern. But despite the fact that you sort of do that role as a medical student, it is still very different as an intern. Mm -hmm. I had a feeling. Like, it's a, I suppose it's different in sort of it's different in two ways, two really striking ways. The first is actually having that title. You alluded to sort of the security of being a medical student, which I think is is an interesting point, right? It's sort of all power and no responsibility as a medical student. Um, yeah. All power is probably not right. It's no power and no responsibility to be. <laughs> um, but you know the, the way that people interact with you is different when you are the doctor. Your patients, you know, even whilst you feel like you don't know very much and you, know, you feel terribly incompetent a lot of the time, which in some cases is true, right? We're at the start of our career. We, we shouldn't be expected to really know everything or everything, be yeah. excellent in our jobs. It's, it's in the nature of internship. Mm -hmm. But despite that being how you feel internally, the patients hang off every word you say. Mm -hmm. They really, really, really put their trust in you. I think more more sort of almost overwhelmingly is when other staff in the hospital do as well. So nursing staff or allied health, you know, they're now coming to you with questions and with the expectation that you will have the answers, that right. you, you know, make decisions that will guide a patient's clinical care. And in many cases, that's working with people who have worked in the hospital system for you know, potentially even decades. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of, I suppose psychological shift is one that I think is really profound and one that can be quite overwhelming and, and one that you really have to grapple with in some respects because mm. you know if you get sort of too caught up in your head, that's when you start to make silly decisions because you forget actually that you, you don't know anything and you should um, you know <laughs> rein it back in a little bit. I yeah. suppose the the other shift, the other sort of the second really big shift in in becoming a doctor is the way your sort of life looks like mm -hmm. one of the advantages of being a medical student at most medical schools is that you really do retain a lot of flexibility in your life you know, if you need to be somewhere in the middle of the week it's usually possible you know yeah. if you need to go home early in a particular day your team is usually happy to facilitate that so it means that you sort of can you know as much as your life is very busy and you're on the wards a lot and you've got study to do you are able to sort of dictate your life in your own terms at most places. I mean, there is one medical school in Australia that actually tracks its students and makes sure that they're coming to the hospital for 40 hours a week. Um, which is right. weird. Um, but otherwise, you really do have that flexibility, which you obviously lose as an intern. You know, yep. you, you can't not be there for your it, shift. It's a job. Yeah. yeah like you yeah. have to actually be there. It's a proper job. But, you know, it's not all doom and gloom, though, right? Because you obtain another kind of flexibility. I mean, most medical students. You know, most medical students come from very privileged backgrounds, but there are plenty who subsist on government payments like youth allowance or Oz study, which are, you know, in dollar terms of pittance, right? You really, really, yeah. really don't earn anything at all. Whereas yeah. once you become an intern, I mean, in Victoria, you can expect to earn you know, before tax about $100,000 a year as an intern. So right. going from sort of a $10,000 a year payment to $100,000, is a really, really, really profound difference in your life that gives you a different kind of flexibility. Right? If a friend asks you out for lunch, you can go out and do it. Right? Yeah, <laughs> like, it's never that yeah. 
you never had that discussion of, you know, you know, we're obviously from Melbourne, you, there's no more Don Tojos, for example. <laughs> <laughs> like you, you, you're able to sort of actually have that kind of flexibility with respect to your life in, in terms of, you know, you might go out for lunch with a friend, you might even pay for your friend's lunch. Like right. it's a very different kind of flexibility, which I think actually compensates for the loss of mm. sort of flexibility with respect to time. Yeah. And it's, it's really interesting as well, not to take it too far back to medical school, but the fact that you said that it was, it's quite flexible in when you're actually doing your, your kind of clinic hours kind of thing as well. So does that mean that as you go through the degree, because the, uh, the proportion of, of clinical placements or clinical hours goes up as you go from second, usually is when most people start clinical placements, some, some start in first, but as you progress towards that fourth year, does that mean that some would actually have greater flexibility in their schedule as they progress, ignoring perhaps the research project? I think it really, it really, really, really depends on the right. rotation that you're on and the university that you're at. There mm -hmm. are, I think in many respects, it's a cultural thing, right? Like really the expectation as universities describe it is that you should be there for 40 hours a week, you know, like you are working as a doctor. The reality is that when you go on your placement, the people who look after you are people like me, like there are other doctors right. who, knows what it's, who know what it's like to be a medical student, who you know can see that there's not much happening on the ward and the medical student is bored. And so there's home. a really strong culture within medicine <laughs> to say to that person, hey, do you wanna go home and actually enjoy your life rather than yeah. sit down and watch us write notes? Yeah. Like, I, I, but, you know, there are some, like, for example, in my own, you know, my own sort of experience in medical school, I was at a particular clinical school that was, you know, it had quite a sort of hands-off kind of vibe. And so it meant that you could sort of have that flexibility without the expectation that you would get told off for it. But right. like our women's rotation, which was at a different hospital, was very, very rigid. Like yeah. if you did not do absolutely everything that you were meant to do and be there every day to do it, then then you sort of, you couldn't really do it. So it's kind of, it's a mixed bag. It depends on the university. Obviously, like I said, there's that university that tracks you. I mean, that means that you have to be at the hospital for 40 hours. Like you've right. got no other choice, but yeah, it's sort of, it, it kind of depends, but usually, mm. usually there is that kind of flexibility there is right. the experience. I think most medical students have. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, it's good. It's a good life. Yeah, sounds it. Absolutely. I'm I think you said the flexibility of being a medical student, which I think actually made me a much better doctor. Right. Yeah. Compared to just being drilled down, just always like a nine to five kind of thing for four years before you even start. There's only so much you can do as a medical student on the ward as well. Mm. Right? Like there is a point in the day where the doctors will spend most of their time doing paperwork, like writing notes or writing scripts. Yeah, it's not like every part of the day is a learning opportunity, so to speak. And there'd be a lot of, I'd imagine a lot of repetitive elements to the day as well. That's like, okay, you've seen that, you know how that works. There's no need for you to, to observe this, this element of the work anymore. Yeah. 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 If you enjoyed the video, why not like it? You can subscribe over here as well. Otherwise you could watch the full episode with Danny down here.